Very happy to welcome my friend, Mr. Don Grierson. Don, thank you so much for doing this. My pleasure. Appreciate Rich. it. It's good seeing you. Don, you know, in an interview that I recently saw with you, uh, you spoke about some of the unique distinctions that this generation's uh, musical artists have from previous generations. And I wondered if you would elaborate on that. Probably by that you mean from the way we looked at artists back in the, the heyday of our business since the change with the internet. Mm -hmm. Well, we did because, you know, being in the world of A&R for so long, um, we had the luxury of being able to develop artists, spend time with artists, and give them time to grow. A lot of artists, most of the big artists, I mean, history will dictate this, that they didn't break big and stay big right out of the box. Most of the great ones that ended up with our legendary history and catalog, they took time. And it wasn't that they planned it that way, it's just they were growing, they were learning, they were creating, and all of those pieces were slowly coming together. And then, as is usually the case, there's that moment in time when the dots connect. And that's where we gave them the time to get to that point. Today, um, understanding the nature of the business and how it's changed, the, the pressure is on for immediacy. And so immediacy means you don't have time. And artists are not being given the time to grow. So an A&R person today, seeing a talented artist, but believing they're not ready, but have the potential, they're not given the time to work with that artist because they, the, the upstairs money people say, we've got to have it now, we don't have time. So artist development is basic, and they openly admit this in the major label world today, that it's, uh, it's pretty much uh, somebody else has to do it now. So we now have the DIY world, do it yourself, where you, I, we can do these things to help. They can do it themselves with managers, with, sometimes with publishers. They can do the groundwork and the building of, the, of their art before it gets to a label level, if they want to go to a label. And a lot of artists today don't want to sign with the labels anymore, the big ones. That's very true. You know, there's been so much said, and you've addressed some of it now, with regards to all of the profound changes that have gone on in the industry and the changes that have happened in the record business. One thing I'm, I'm curious about is if you could talk about some of the things that you feel haven't changed with regards to what it takes to be successful today? Because that, I think, is something that doesn't get spoken about enough. Well, I believe, uh, you know, and I'm, this is my personal viewpoint, I think a lot of people support it, that, you know, artists uh, are unique, and they must be unique. Um, and when they're unique, they're not necessarily seeing what we are supposed to see, the bigger picture. They have a viewpoint of who they are, what they are, and where they want to go. And they need somebody, often, not always, but often they need somebody to uh, be the overviewer, the, you know, the focus person. Um, sometimes if it's a singer, you mentioned Celine, I mean, one of the great vocalists of our time, but she's not a songwriter. So somebody has to worry about finding great songs for her. And somebody has to find the producers to go in the studio and get that magic out of her voice and the, through the production. So um, that, is a, that is a whole A&R world that seems to have been, not totally, but to a great degree, um, moved aside because we're now looking for artists who are self-contained, have done it themselves, or are producer-oriented, the very trendy song of the day. Some amazing hit singles come out of that, but a lot of it's not backed up by true artistry. They're more studio productions, you know, the Dr. Luke mentality which is, you know, hey, I love hits, you know, I wouldn't knock it. But they're not developing many great artists through that process. And we, we, I believe firmly that that's needed today. And A&R doesn't do it, so fortunately for the world that I live in, uh, being a consultant, I can sometimes become involved with artists who need some of that um, help and assistance and focus that they would have got at a label before, but now don't get. What about for artists themselves? in terms of the things that haven't changed in terms of what they need? Well, to me, I go back to the basics, real simple. There's a word called song. Um, if you're a dance artist or a trance artist or you know, a heavy metal band, it's not quite the same. But in the mainstream, you've got to have songs. If you're a singer of any kind, rock singer, pop singer, you know, or an Adele-type singer, you've got to have songs. And if you don't focus on songs, you can be a great singer with mediocre songs, I'm sorry, it's going to be tough. But you can be a good singer and have some persona, but have a great song 
and the world can open up. So I think that's really the key. And you look at, look at history. All of the great artists had their ups and downs as, as they go through their challenge of a career, but they all had great songs and that kept them. They'd have an album with no hits and it would dip a bit. Then they come back with a big single, boom. You've got to have songs. It's history. It's not me. It's, not, it's, it's fact of life. You know, and then you need the other things, the right production and all of those things to, you know, enhance. But if the singer doesn't have a song, I'm sorry, there's a problem. Is that happening as much today, do you think? Um, well, we are very singles oriented today. You know, now with the internet, we're downloading is primarily singles as against albums. So you're now driven by, do you have a hit single? A lot of those hit singles that we have on the charts and are doing business, um, they're pop songs, they're well-crafted pop songs. And there's nothing wrong with that. We've always had that since the beginning of pop music. And then you see an artist like Michael Bublé on one side, who is singing great songs, a lot of old songs, and some new now. And then, of course, the classic example today is Adele, who is a true artiste, you know, doesn't need flash flair, dances and flashy backgrounds. She stands there, or sits there, and sings from the heart songs that she you know, went through emotionally to create, but there are songs written in a way where somebody else who doesn't know her in a day to day can take those songs and relate to them. You know, we all want someone like you, you know? We all have a vision of that person that we want. Whether we have them, if we have them, then there's something else to look at. But those, those are the true artists, and it's about them singing real songs. And that, if you look at the, the success ratio of what's going on with the biggest sellers basically are not the mainstream top 40 artists. You know, you've got a Lady Gaga and you've got a Katy Perry selling big numbers, and Taylor Swift coming out of country, but you think of uh, Adele and you think of Michael Bublé and Josh Groban and even Susan Boyle, which was a unique situation. You look at Eminem, who comes from the contemporary scene, but as a rapper, he's a storyteller. And so he's really writing great songs in his genre of music and he sells the big numbers you go you and I talk about this a lot yeah. you go down the charts and the biggest acts to this day are still the acts that relate to the mass audience with great material and then everybody has to do their job of course the company has to go out and promote and market you know once the public connect they go and buy